Good morning, and welcome to the Holston Valley Unitarian Universalist Virtual Church. My name is Beth, and I'm glad we can get together, even though we cannot eat, actually be together. Today, our minister, Reverend Jeff Breer, offers a remembrance of some people who died during the last year. Tomorrow is Memorial Day, a holiday that originated in the 19th century and was intended to memorialize those service members who died in wartime. It has since become an occasion to memorialize all those who have died. To accompany the lighting of our chalice, I have a poem from David Eaton. It's called A Common Destiny. All living substance, all substance of energy, being and purpose are united and share the same destiny. All people, those we love and those we know not of, are united and share the same destiny. Birth to death, we share this unity with the sun, the earth, flowers of the field, snowflakes, volcanoes, and moonbeams. Birth, life, death, unknown, known, unknown. Our destiny from unknown to unknown. May we have the faith to accept this mystery and build upon its everlasting truth. For music today, Kim Ray brings us a song by Pat Humphreys that underscores the many ways that we are unified. This is Swimming to the Other Side. We are living beneath the Great Big Dipper. We are washed by the very same rain. We are swimming in the stream together, some in power, some in vain. We can worship this ground we walk on, cherishing the beings that we live beside. Loving spirits will live forever. We're all swimming to the other side. I am alone and I am searching hungering for answers in my time i am balanced at the brink of wisdom i'm impatient to receive a sign i move forward with my senses open imperfection would be my crime in humility i will listen we're all swimming to the other side we are living beneath the great big dipper we are washed by the very same rain we are swimming in the stream together, some in power, some in pain. We can worship this ground we walk on, cherishing the beings that we live beside. Loving spirits will live forever, we're all swimming to the other side. On this journey through thoughts and feelings, finding intuition, my head, my heart, I am gathering the tools together, I'm preparing to do my part. All of those who have come before me, band together and be my guide. Loving lessons that I will follow, we're all swimming to the other side. We are living with the great big dipper, we are washed by the very same rain. We are swimming in the stream together, some in power, some in pain. We can worship this ground we walk on, cherishing the beings that we live beside. Loving spirits will live forever, we're all swimming to the other side. When we get there, we'll discover all of the gifts we've been given to share have been with us since 
just life's beginning and we never noticed they were there. We can balance at the brink of wisdom, never recognizing that we've arrived. Loving spirits will live together, we're all swimming to the other side. We are living with the Great Big Dipper, we are washed by the very same rain. We are swimming in the stream together, some in power, some in pain. We can worship this ground we walk on, cherishing the beings that we live beside. Loving spirits will live forever, we're all swimming to the other side. Loving spirits will live forever, we're all swimming to the other side. Hilary landau Krivchenia is the minister of Countryside Church in Palatine, Illinois. About lighting candles, she wrote, We light these candles for our families, our beloved ones, and our friends, for those who are near and far, and for those from whom we feel an unwanted distance, for those whose lives are vulnerable, for our own vulnerable hearts, for all those we have lost, known and unknown, for the suffering we've experienced, for our planet torn by pain. Let us light these candles in hope and in healing. My name is Jeff Breer and I'm the minister of this virtual church. I hope you are doing well. Tomorrow is Memorial Day and in the last year we've lost some people who were important to us. I'd like to remember them today. In December 1944, Army Private Francis Curry was sitting in a foxhole outside the Belgian town of Malmody when a column of German tanks suddenly rolled out of the mist. Curry and several other soldiers were forced to take cover in an abandoned paper factory where they found a bazooka, but no ammunition. Curry, a lanky 19-year-old from upstate New York, raced outside under enemy fire to grab some rockets from a smashed American tank. He loaded and fired the bazooka, disabled the Nazi tank, and then fired again, collapsing a house occupied by enemy soldiers. Spotting a group of GIs trapped in a foxhole, he hurled grenades at approaching tanks and the infantry, and when the grenades ran out, he blasted them with a machine gun. Having suffered heavy casualties, the Germans retreated. Curry was awarded the Medal of Honor, but he always downplayed his bravery, saying that it was just one day in nine months of steady combat. You might not know Frida Kaplan's name, but you've almost certainly tasted her legacy. The founder of Frida's Specialty Produce revolutionized American cuisine by persuading supermarkets to stock what were then considered exotic fruits and vegetables, including habanero peppers, fresh ginger, shiitake mushrooms, passion fruit, and spaghetti squash. Her first big score came in 1962 when she procured a batch of Chinese gooseberries from New Zealand and she gave the fuzzy brown fruit a more appetizing name, kiwi fruit. It took 18 years for kiwi fruit to catch on, but today they're a grocery store staple. 
I couldn't compete with all the boys on big items, Kaplan said. So I built the business selling things that were different. In 1958, a young Rusi Taylor was visiting Disneyland with her mother when she noticed Walt Disney sitting alone on a bench. She approached Disney and offered him some popcorn and struck up a conversation. Disney asked Rusi what she wanted to do when she grew up. She said, I want to work for you. That childhood ambition came true in 1986 when Taylor beat 200 other voice actresses to become the squeaky voice of Minnie Mouse in a new film. She played Minnie on TV and movies and theme parks for more than 30 years, and she brought to life many other Disney characters, including Huey, Dewey, and Louie. <laughs> I never wanted to be famous, she said. My characters were famous, and that's fine for me. For over two decades, Representative Elijah Cummings was a powerful presence on Capitol Hill. Equipped with a resonant baritone and a poetic turn of phrase, the Democrat was sent to the House 13 times by the voters of Maryland's 7th Congressional District, which includes much of Baltimore. He campaigned tirelessly on issues that affected the poor in his majority black district advocating for lower prescription drug prices, criminal justice reform, and help for drug addicts. But it was as the chair of the House Committee on Oversight and Reform, a role he assumed earlier that year that Cummings shot to national prominence. He launched numerous investigations into the Trump administration, including subpoenas for President Trump's tax returns and summoning the president's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, to testify about hush money payments to women who claimed to have had affairs with Trump. In turn, the president tossed insults at Cummings, calling him a brutal bully and describing his hometown as a rat and roast rodent infested mess. Cummings responded by inviting the president to his district and calling on all politicians to stop using racist language and encouraging reprehensible behavior. It only creates more division among us. Toni Morrison gave voice to millions of people who had long been relegated to the margins of American life. With poetic and awful, often painful language, the Nobel Prize winning author placed African Americans, especially women, at the heart of her 11 novels. Many of Morrison's characters were tortured but proud figures who were, she said, unavailable to pity. They included Sethi, the runaway slave and beloved who commits infanticide rather than see her daughter raised in bondage. Peckala Breedlove, a black girl who struggles with feelings of racial inferiority and longs for eyes like Shirley Temple in the novel The Bluest Eye. And lastly, Macon Dead III, who spends decades searching for his roots and his identity in Song of Solomon. What drove Morrison to write about the African-American experience, she said in 2003, it was the silence. So many stories untold and unexamined. There was a wide vacuum in the literature. COVID-19 took a lot of people from us this year let us remember a few of them. Presented with the Medal of Honor by President Barack Obama in 2014, Benny Atkins distinguished himself as a hero during three tours of duty in Vietnam. It was March 9th, 1966, early in the morning when his camp in the Aishaw Valley was attacked by North Vietnamese with mortars and rocket propelled grenades. When a critical resupply drop landed outside the camp, Adkins stepped outside of the wire to retrieve it. He dodged through the incoming fire to man a mortar position to repel insurgents. He survived being hit by shrapnel many times while breaking cover to reach wounded soldiers in order to get them to a place of safety. The North Vietnamese forces regrouped and redoubled their attack the next day. Before long, Adkins was the last man with a mortar, but eventually he ran out of ammunition. He fell back on small arms, hand grenades, and a recoilless rifle to repel the attack. 
dashing back and forth from mortar pit to bunker through enemy fire to, to resupply his diminishing stock of ammunition. In 2015, Atkins said, we were not going to be prisoners of war, whatever we had to do. Atkins was admitted to the East Alabama Medical Center in Opelika, Alabama at the end of March. When his condition deteriorated, he was moved to intensive care and put on a ventilator. But despite the best efforts of his medical team, he died April 17th, following complications caused by COVID-19. Sadly, none of his family were able to see him while he was in hospital due to the restrictions put in place to contain the spread of the coronavirus. Joanne Malady embraced adventure after receiving a double lung transplant in 2007. She took up such thrills as hang gliding, skiing, skateboarding, and kayaking. She died March 30th of COVID-19, age 67. Margit Buchalder Feldman, a Holocaust survivor who was liberated from Auschwitz in 1945 and later settled in New Jersey, where she educated young people about the horrors of Nazism. She died April 14th, age 90. Skylar Herbert, a young daughter of two Detroit first responders, tested positive for COVID-19 last month and developed a rare form of meningitis. She died April 17th, age five. Tadashi Sufura, who was a child during World War II, was forcibly removed from his California home and detained with his Japanese-American family at an Arizona internment camp. He later became a beloved teacher and principal in New York City. He died March 29th, age 89. Valentina Blackhorse, a winner of multiple pageants in the Navajo Nation, dreamed of entering politics and becoming a delegate to the Navajo Nation Council. She died of COVID-19, April 23, age 28. Madeline Kripke, who assembled one of the world's largest collections of dictionaries in her Manhattan apartment. An estimated 20,000 volumes that ranged from a Latin dictionary printed in 1502 to a book of Greenland slang. She died April 25th, age 76. Paul Carey was a retired Colorado paramedic and grandfather of four. He traveled to New York City to volunteer in the fight against the pandemic, and he died April 30th, age 66. Frank Gabrin, a doctor at the East Orange General Hospital in New Jersey, who worked on the front lines of the pandemic and became the first emergency physician in this country to succumb to COVID-19. He died March 31st, age 60. Ellis Marcellus Jr., a jazz pianist, an educator, and patriotic, patriarch of the Marcellus family, taught leading jazz talents such as Terrence Blanchard and Harry Connick Jr. He died April 1st, age 85. The last person I want to remember is Leilani Jordan, a grocery store clerk from Largo, Maryland, who suffered from cerebral palsy but kept working through the pandemic because she wanted to help people. She died April 1st, age 27. This poem by my colleague Barb Peskin seems appropriate. This is Morning Watch. Spirit of life, whom we have called by many names in thanksgiving and in anguish. Bless the poets and those who mourn. Send peace for the soldiers who did not make the wars, but whose lives were consumed by them. Let stronger trees grow above graves far from home. Breathe through the arms of their branches. The earth will swallow your tears while they sing no more. Never again, remember me. For the wounded ones and those who received them back, let there be someone ready when the memories come, when the scars pull, and the buried metal moves and forgiveness for those of us who were not there for our ignorance. And in us, 
veterans in a forest of a thousand fallen promises, let new leaves of protest grow on our stumps. Give us courage to answer the cry of humanity's pain. And with our bare hands, out of full hearts, with all our intelligence, let us create the peace. Our time together is nearly finished, but our work is not done. May our spirits be renewed and our resolve strengthened as we meet the challenges in the week to come. Help me extinguish the chalice now. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and share with all the world. My name is Lily Kramer, and I'm happy that we could get together today. Thanks for joining us, and please come back whenever you like. We will post another virtual church service next Sunday. I hope to chat with you during our virtual coffee hour beginning at 1130. You can find the link on our website, hvuuc.org, under the News and Events tab. Please contact the minister or the caring team if you or someone you know needs help during this time. To close today's service, we hope you enjoy Imagine by Ruth Sandberg. The last lines are, so you open your heart to the riches that each child of God has to give. The one loving spirit has shown us we need one another to live. As you make your way through the week, remember these words. You are good, you are loved. We all need a little work and we're all in this together. And there's nothing left to say but yay church. Love has to give the one love.